This time, it can be different. It has to. With Resident Evil 4 Remake just a few days away, I wanted to cover a very important story that sets up a dynamic between Leon and another character that we'll be seeing in the game, that being Jack Krauser. Now, I imagine the events of this story are going to differ in the remake's continuity, but I imagine key moments and the basic story will be relatively the same, enough for this video to serve its purpose. With that said, let's get into the story of Resident Evil's The Dark Side Chronicles, Operation Javier. In 2002, the US government dispatched agents Leon Kennedy and Jack Krauser on a mission in South America. Their target was a man by the name of Javier Hidalgo, who was known to be a criminal drug lord that was found to be in contact with a former Umbrella researcher. After the events of Raccoon City in 1998, Leon was offered to join a top secret military program led by the president specifically to destroy Umbrella. Given the suspected difficulty of this mission, the US government hired Jack Krauser to be Leon's partner on this mission. Krauser's resume was outstanding, having led several successful operations and being a soldier of the U.S. Special Forces Command. So even though Krauser himself has never faced BOWs, it's safe to say he can definitely handle himself. After meeting up with Leon, the two would set their journey towards a nearby town, marking the start of a mission that would forever change their lives. Arriving in the town, Leon and Krauser find the town to be seemingly empty with the only noise being a radio broadcast reporting the rising cases of missing girls. Krauser notes that it smells like there was a battle, but no bodies or blood or gunshots seem to be anywhere. Just after making this observation, however, a man approaches the pair who turns out to be a zombie. Leon shoots him and notices that this is a zombie, but it's nothing like the one he faced in Raccoon City. Before he can even process it, they're ambushed by more zombies, forcing them to fight their way out. As they're making their way through the village, they come across an injured man who Krauser identifies as their guide. The man can only say a few words, mentioning that he helped the girl escape from Javier's mansion, but soon after, she brought devils with her, whatever that means. Before they can ask him to elaborate, the man succumbs to his wounds, forcing Leon and Krauser to find a way out of the village. Having no other way to get to Javier's mansion, they realize the only way they're going to get there now is by finding this girl. Leon mentions there being a boat near the church, and so as the two begin to make their way out of the structure, they hear something behind them. They turn to find that the body of the man is now gone. Something is following them. Just outside the church, Leon hears something from inside. They enter the church to find a lone girl singing in the center. Before they can say anything, they notice a large B.O.W. sneaking up on her. As Leon readies his gun, she stops singing, and the B.O.W. attacks. The two decide to lead the large amphibious B.O.W. outside, where they have more room to fight. Working together, they're able to defeat it, forcing it to retreat. It seems this is what was following them. Before leaving the village, Leon and Krauser save the girl, who had fallen unconscious during the battle. Having no previous experience with B.O.W.s, Krauser asks Leon to shed some light on the Raccoon City incident and just what he faced. Leon goes on to tell him everything about Raccoon City, but notes that what they had faced in the village was nothing like what he had dealt with. The girl wakes up with Leon reassuring her that she is now safe. He explains to her that they're on a very important mission to find Javier and if she could lead them to his mansion. She agrees and as they arrive at a large dam, she explains that this is the route that she used to escape. Entering the dam, she tells them that her name is Manuela. As they make their way up the dam fighting B.O.W.s, Javier's voice comes through an intercom. Please, my dear, go. Father! What? Manuela races off and the two have to follow her, making their way into a large room where none other than Javier himself is. Here, Leon and Krauser find out that Javier is Manuela's father, and that for some reason, he has infected her with the T. Veronica virus. And just for general purposes, this is the same virus that Claire faced in the events of Code Veronica. Before either of the agents can make a move or say anything, they're swept away by a large rush of water. Without hesitation, Manuela jumps in after them. After waking up in another part of the dam, Leon begins to wonder just how Manuela hasn't turned if she's been infected, and why she's been infected. After all, what kind of man would infect his own daughter with a virus? Before he can think any further, Krauser brings him to his senses. The two begin to make their way back up the dam, 
and Leon tells Krauser he's in disbelief that Manuela is Javier's daughter. Krauser notes that this wasn't in the report, and the only way to know for sure was by asking her, but regardless, their mission is to capture Javier. Continuing to make their way back up the dam, they reunite with Manuela. However, Javier's voice comes through the intercom once more, urging his men to find and capture Manuela before it's too late. After reaching the top of the dam, Krauser and Leon face more BOWs, which they quickly dispatch. Having now a moment of peace, Leon asks Manuela about her situation. She explains to the two that a few years ago, she was contracted with the same fatal disease that killed her mother. And so as a last resort, Javier infected her with the Veronica virus. Leon notes to himself that this is a very confusing case, because not even the original creators of the Veronica virus were able to harness its power and control it. But somehow, Manuela's case is different, and he intends to find out why. Just outside of Javier's mansion, Krauser suggests to Leon that they should take care of Manuela before she turns. Leon says otherwise, explaining that this is a very unique case, and he intends to get to the bottom of it. In addition, Leon reveals to Krauser that his orders for this mission are coming directly from the president. Being a soldier, Krauser realizes he can't go against the president, and so he reassures Leon that he's with him until the end of the mission. As they close in on the mansion, Javier's voice comes through a loudspeaker, sarcastically thanking them for bringing back his daughter, and suddenly, they're surrounded by BOWs. Krauser notices all these infected have Javier's army tattoo on them, revealing that he's basically infected every single one of his soldiers. Having no other way into the mansion, Manuela remembers that there is an underground passage they can take. Making their way through the tunnel into the mansion, they enter a room full of corpses. Manuela reveals to them that these are her doctors, who Javier must have killed after they explained to her how her father cured her. Unable to find Javier in the mansion, Manuela leads them to a room that she was never allowed to go in. Making their way through a greenhouse, Krauser points out a corpse, who happens to be the Umbrella Researcher. Leon expresses his frustration, now knowing that they are unable to interrogate him. Regardless, they get to the end of the greenhouse where they find an elevator leading to a secret facility. In the facility, they find a large medical room full of human organs. As Leon comes across a body, he immediately recognizes the face as one of the missing girls in the posters. Soon after, Manuela collapses in pain, and Javier enters the room. He explains to them that he had no other choice other than to infect her with the Veronica virus and that the only way he's been able to treat her is by consistently having her organs transplanted. However, he reveals that he is not solely keeping her alive out of the goodness of his heart, but rather so that she can harness the power of the Veronica virus and use it for herself. Once again, before Leon and Krauser can do anything, Javier steps away and a large BOW shows up. It's none other than the amphibious one from the village. Fighting it in a large room, they make their way up platforms to gain ground. However, in the middle of the fight, Manuela steps out of the medical room and begins to sing the exact same song from the church. The large BOW regards Manuela, however, instead of attacking or seeming angry, it's calm and in peace. It isn't until Javier's voice comes through an intercom telling Manuela to stop singing that the BOW continues its rampage. Leon rushes over to Manuela, ensuring that she's safe before distracting the BOW and continuing the fight. After a lengthy battle, it seems the BOW is finally down, and the agents make their way back down to reunite with Manuela. However, the BOW quickly launches an attack on the two. Just as Krauser turns to shoot the BOW, one of its projectiles impales his arm, creating a large wound. Leon quickly reacts and helps Krauser finish the BOW. As the BOW is dying, it reaches out to Manuela. Seemingly comforting her, Manuela realizes that this is her mother. Looking into her eyes for one last time, they revert to normal before dying. Having watched the events unfold through a monitor, Javier takes a few steps back, deciding that he is going to finish this himself. He approaches the large Veronica flower, allowing it to consume him. What happens next, you'll find out in just a moment. Before they can make their way out of the facility, Leon and Krauser are surprised by a large BOW. However, with a large wound in his arm, Krauser finds himself unable to assist Leon as he previously could. Nevertheless, the two are able to defeat the BOW and make their way out of the facility. As the group makes their way outside, they are immediately bombarded by large projectiles. They turn to see a massive BOW. Javier's voice can be heard coming from the large creature, revealing that he merged with the Veronica virus in order to destroy them all. Manuela watches as Leon and Krauser are unable to do any damage to Javier, and she contemplates if this is the future she truly desires for herself. She declares that she would rather die a human than die a monster, and charges at her father intending for him to kill her. Leon chases after her and rescues her before she's attacked. However, now laying on the ground, Javier attempts to destroy them both. Unknowingly, Manuela taps into the Veronica virus and uses it to activate a power that turns her blood into a flammable substance. 
Using her powers, Manuela flings blood at Javier's joints, weakening them, allowing Leon and Krauser to damage them. After doing enough damage, Javier screams out in pain that he's beginning to lose control, stating that the virus is consuming him. They continue to use Manuela's blood to weaken Javier, and once he's subdued, he begs Leon to put him down. Realizing this is the most merciful thing they can do for him while also destroying the virus, Leon shoots Javier, putting an end to the Veronica virus in South America. After Javier's death, an escort arrives to extract the survivors. Depending on your ending, two things happen here. Manuela is taken to the US government where she is placed under custody and studied for research. Or, after losing too much blood in the fight, she dies in front of Leon, dissolving into these particles that fly off with the wind. Nevertheless, Leon reflects on Manuela and why she never turned, if it was her connection to these lands or it was just some once-in-a-lifetime case. Either way, Krauser's arm never fully healed and he was discharged from the military and never seen from again. It's unclear whether Manuela's survival is canon or not. In fact, there are three endings in this game, one of which she survives, the one where she dies, and the ending where she survives but from Krauser's perspective. You can only receive this ending by playing through the bonus chapters 6 and 7, which are just chapters 4 and 5 but from Krauser's perspective. And I'm assuming because of Krauser's ending, this is why people assume that Manuela surviving is canon, but we'll get into why I don't think she survived in an upcoming segment. As previously mentioned, chapters 6 and 7 are just chapters 4 and 5 told from Krauser's perspective. Right after Leon reveals to Krauser that his orders are coming from the president, Krauser realizes that he is essentially a pawn in this entire thing. He begins to wonder why people like Javier are so fascinated with these viruses, and if it really is possible to control them. As they make their way through the greenhouse and the facility, he finds himself daydreaming a lot, dreaming of success, returning home, and being seen as a hero. However, all of these illusions come to an immediate end the moment he is injured. He realizes the damage done to his arm is going to be irreversible, and no matter what happens to him during this mission, this is going to be his final mission. He's reluctant to admit it, but in his head he admits to himself that his entire survival now hinges on Leon. It isn't until the moment that Krauser watches Manuela use her powers that he realizes it is possible for someone to control these viruses. Before, he was in complete panic and disarray, but watching Javier lose control of the virus, he doesn't see this as a moment of reconsideration, but rather that Javier was just too weak. It is at this moment that it's revealed that Krauser is no longer the man he used to be. He is now completely intoxicated with the thought of getting his hands on one of these viruses. He thinks back to what Leon told him about Raccoon City, and that if he could find the man known as Albert Wesker, he could heal his arm and possibly become more powerful than he ever imagined. Krauser silently glares at Leon, feeling nothing but disdain for him, seeing the two of them as different sides of the same coin, one who wants to destroy these viruses and one who wants to control them. Before we close out this video, I wanted to quickly go over the different endings. You get what a lot of people refer to as the good ending if you quickly defeat Javier and Manuela does not lose a lot of blood. On the other hand, you get what's known as the bad ending by doing the complete opposite, which is where she dissolves into this sort of particle substance. I personally believe that the ending where she dies is the canon ending only because, to my knowledge, Manuela is never spoken about ever again, she doesn't appear in a single file, and honestly, if the US government had a perfectly normal person with the Veronica virus, I feel like they could have learned a lot about it. And if that was the case, someone like Krauser could easily get a hold of anything from the government and use it to heal his arm and, you know, do whatever he wanted to do. So as far as I'm concerned, I really feel like she does not survive the events of Operation Javier. Which is very unfortunate, but I feel like this is something that could heavily influence Leon's character in Resident Evil 4, especially in the remake. If you didn't know, the story of Operation Javier actually came out after Resident Evil 4, the original. I'm hoping that the story of this is somehow retained in the remake's continuity, and his use to further push Leon's character. This could also tie into what Krauser tells Leon in the trailer, which is, you can't save anyone, and I don't see why he would be saying this unless he was referring to Ada, but still, the only way he would know about Ada was either through Ada herself, or by Leon telling him the events of Raccoon City, which means Operation Javier still had to happen. So it's completely possible he's just referring to Leon being a failure to anyone he tries to save, and that's kind of why this mission he embarks on in the remake is very important to him. Either way, we're not going to know for certain until Resident Evil 4 Remake comes out, which is just in a few days now, and I'm very excited. But with all of that said, that is the story of Operation Javier. I've been wanting to cover this for a while, but I had so much schoolwork, and on top of that, I got sick at the beginning of March, so woo. Um, 
I was not able to do anything for a very long time and I as soon as I started to feel better I decided hey I gotta get this video out because we are nine days away from Resident Evil 4. Given how relevant this story is at the moment, I'm surprised no one went ahead to make a whole video breaking it down, which is why I decided, hey, I'm going to do that. But also because I have some friends who haven't played this or seen the story, and I really want them to like experience it just before a remake, because in the original, Krauser kind of just shows up out of nowhere, and you don't really know what's the deal with him until this. So I'm just, you know, filling in the blanks before they're even created. But all in all, for anyone that happens to be watching this, I really hope you enjoyed it. And let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm going to catch you guys later. Please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more Resident Evil content, and I'll see you guys next time. This time, it has to be different.